Let art consume our streets until each city is a masterpiece. The faster we plaster our artistry craftily, the harder to argue we can't be free, artfully adding additions to each park we see, car or tree, guerrilla gardening, cast yarn bombs or carpentry. Citizens at ease to connect, express craftily. Half of the smart art paths we were marked to be taking. Since mankind thought to construct train station, and that first scratched name of one man left waiting. Until we reach critical mass, move the nation away from graph hating, stop wasting empty spaces. Let walls be opportunities waiting to be taken. But please consider too beautification. Don't just tell me who was here, leave insightful quotations. Hi, I'm Fenella. I first went by feline in a rap battle in 2003 in Hobart at Mobius. And I've been performing as feline most of the time. I've been living in Melbourne now for about three years. I've moved from the western suburbs and then to Preston and now to Caulfield. So I'm kind of making my way around Melbourne to get a bit more perspective of the different sides. But I think my heart really lies in the city and the inner north. I first actually would have come to Melbourne when I was little from Tassie. I know my parents, they took the family on a, on a ski trip to Mount Buller a couple of times. And I remember being on a tram for the first time when I was little. But the first time I lived in Melbourne was in 2005. What drew me to want to live in Melbourne was actually the hip hop scene. The place I feel the strongest connection and cultural resonance in Melbourne is in, within the hip hop community and particularly freestyle rap nights on Wednesday at Horse Bazaar. Half the fun's not just necessarily even on stage, but the cypher's outside and it's just a beautiful community. I feel like, you know, my tribe is the poets and the artists and they provide the heartbeat and the undercurrent to the city. Yeah, I feel at home when I'm freestyling, <laughs> when I'm creating and connecting with other artists. Home. Home's an interesting thing. I always used to say home is where my cat is. My cat died a few months ago. So I guess now home is where my feet are. And I do tend to make myself at home wherever I am. I think Tasmania still feels like home. I, I like to think of Melbourne as a colony of Launceston where I grew up uh, because it was John Batman that left Launceston and, and set up a colony here. I heard that John Batman bought, bought Melbourne for um, a bunch of blankets and some tomahawks and a bunch of other useless stuff that they really wouldn't have needed. And I'm sure they certainly, the elders that had these negotiations with John Batman certainly didn't realise that he thought he was buying the place because as if they would have sold the land. I mean, Aboriginal people are an integral part of the land and that's like selling their flesh, selling their legs, selling their hearts. They had a corroboree, they exchanged possum skins and they danced and well, of course, they were given gifts and they thought it was a gift ceremony and they shared the space with the people not knowing they were going to take it over and do what they did. And now, of course, the, the original Australians uh, still suffer the consequences of colonisation in so many ways. We've got so many different cultures here now and there's wonder, many wonderful things. And I think that all Australians sort of have the responsibility to think about that and to integrate what we've got and turn it into something beautiful and it is something beautiful but it still seems so fractioned. I guess every artist communicates through their art and it has a great ability, art has a great ability of introducing people to new ideas and feelings and that's something I guess I do strive for in my own writing. That connection and I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's all about love. I wrote my first rap song in 2005 after a hip hop workshop at the Footscray Community Arts Centre. And that was with Raceless from Curse of Dialects. Until then, I'd only been a freestyle rapper. 
that was a really good experience. Like the first song I ever wrote, Race has actually made an instrumental for each of us in the class and I wrote based on the instrumental he gave me. There are many writing techniques people can use, like, you know, simile and metaphor, onomatopoeia, alliteration, assonance is a good one for rappers. I write when the moment takes me and I, I think there's a lot to be said for actually taking the time to write each day. Freestyling is just so beautiful, like sometimes it, it's a bit awkward and forced. I mean the nature of freestyle is that every time is so completely different. You have to be prepared to open your mouth and start a sentence without knowing where it's going to end up. And that can be pretty scary. Once you get over the fact that you're there and you're doing it and you may as well just do it anyway, then I think it becomes easier. Freestyling is so beautiful because those moments when you get in the zone, uh, as they say, and I just remember this, the one time I was most in the zone, it just, it was, it felt so amazing, like my whole body was alive and I was hearing words come out of my mouth that I had not even thought of. Like they were just coming out and they were rhyming and they were being poetic and social commentary and all sorts of crazy stuff, everything. Every single person has their own unique set of ideas and skills and being. And we all have something to contribute in that sense. And I think, yeah, like authenticity and, and just speaking it how it is for you is a really powerful way to connect with the world because if we're all living in our authenticity and we're all contributing then can't help but be living your life purpose and all succeeding together maybe. <laughs>